the big daddy, the king. And um, he's a fairly fair-minded guy. And anyway, so this this servant is thrown before him, and one of his counselors leans in and he says, you know, because he asks the counselor, how much does this guy man owe? He said, you know, like, he owes 10,000 talents. He could never pay that off, you know? I mean, 10,000 talents, if they put in our money now, that would be like several billion dollars anyway. Um, and so there's no way this guy can pay the debt. And so and he's there pleading, I'll pay it, I'll pay, you know. And he said, finally he told him, I forgive you the debt, you know. Now, go and out there and do likewise, basically, you know. And so he's, as soon as that he goes out, he tracks down another servant who owes him money, like 10 pence or whatever. And so a couple of the king's counselors saw him go shake this guy down for 10, 10 pence. And I mean, and he had him thrown away in the debtor's prison, you know. And so these guys go back to the uh, king and tell him what we just saw. This guy just, anyways, the king has them bring him back in. And the king had prepared the, the court, the room before he got, before this guy got there. So he had shelves and tables and stuff with sacks of gold. I mean, just, just unimaginable amounts of gold bullion and stuff to, to show what a good visual of what 10,000 talents was. And he tells him, you know, he, when the guy comes walking in, he just says, thou wicked servant, I forgave you 10,000 talents. He says, and you went out and shake a guy down and throw him in prison because, you know, couldn't you have shown him forgiveness like you show him forgiveness? Right. I mean, over 10 pence. Anyway, he had the guys taken away by the tormentors. Anyway. And so I'm thinking the fear of God or, or scariness of God would be in a moment like that for somebody who realizes they have made a real big boo-boo by... Yeah. How do the that. Christians get around that parable? I don't know. I think they just take it as almost like you know, in the book of Proverbs, how it'll yeah. say something, but it's not an absolute statement. It's a relative statement. Yeah, it's a They'll, to they'll, teach a, a they'll actually take Matthew 18 with a grain of salt, with two grains of salt, three grains of salt, buckets of salt. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, you know, Jesus may have said this, yeah, but Martin Luther said this, and Protestantism said this, and the doctrines of men say this. Faith alone. Yeah, see how that works for you. It's like, it's a much more than that. And they don't really know what faith is. So I are you think. a forgiveness salvationist? A, a forgiveness salvationist? Yeah. Well, we all have to be forgiven. We all have to be forgiven. Yeah. But do you believe that the forgiveness is taken away when you don't forgive? Do you take the parable literally? Do you take it seriously? Yeah, if it, it, we're told Sometimes clearly, I, told, I, I told the bishop this, and he, I mean, his face went like this. You told him what? I told him, if you don't forgive someone, you can take the atonement of Jesus Christ with you on the way to hellfire. No salt here, Gary. Yeah. There's no salt in Matthew 18. Yeah. I take it at face value. And, you know, 
Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, If you forgive others, you'll be forgiven. If you do not forgive others, you will not be forgiven. Right? Yeah. That is a Bible verse. Mm-hmm. But with the, the and it it's not I mean it's from God, but it's not from Jesus, you know? Well Matthew that, eighteen is from Jesus. Well, like it says Matthew eighteen thirty five. Yeah. So will happen to you. We believe the Bible to be the word of God as with this caveat, as it is translated correctly. So we have the Joe Smith version. And a lot of times we will divert to that and see what he said to see, what that scripture really should have read like and so because under inspiration of the Holy Ghost he was able to that was a big work he took on to um, go throughout the Bible and change some things there as he was directed by the Spirit I don't think it's a thing where he was maybe pouring over page by page I think it, as things came to him over time as he studied it he realized that, yeah, this this is not how this is was supposed to read. This was not the original intent. And so there's a lot of things that come out of that. Yeah, or, you know, there'll just be a verse that can be easily forked off. Hey, you want to walk me home? I got to I gotta get going here. Really? Yeah. Man. I know. I have about an hour. It's like, yeah. But yeah, I do believe that, you know, we thousand talents yeah. you know you look at the uh, the sin debt of man yeah. and how violent and vicious sin is yeah. and then to have that forgiven you're expected to forgive you're, you're, you're expected to change as a person well, yeah, yeah. during that from that experience yeah. and um, but some people they don't change they continue to take and I wanted to make a video about this with you today but uh, you brought up that parable and it reminded me of my message and what my doctrine you know yeah. that the gospel itself the forgiveness the atonement Jesus Christ, the whole thing is a gift, right? Sure. It's a conditional gift. Yep. Gary? Sure it is. Um, and like I said, I want to make a video about this with that's you. That's made so crystal clear. It's crystal clear. Yeah, it's and in this parable, you can see that he's forgiving the 10,000 but it's secretly conditional. That's the thing. It's not, you know, he, the, the, the king didn't write uh, a contract. It was like, this should be obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this should be obvious, you know. Now, there's, there's, I was talking to someone on the internet, and he was trying to tell me that there's no such thing as a conditional gift. So I went to ChatGPT and I said, can you give me some examples of conditional gifts? And of course, brrr, yeah. a bunch of them, right? Yeah, there you go. Some cool ones that, <coughs> that it told me here, no. was here, <laughs> real estate. Yeah. You give someone a house, but it's conditional. They're not allowed to sell it for yeah. cash. Yeah. I want you to live in there, right? Right. Scholarship, athletic scholarship, right? Yeah. I will... Um, give you full ride scholarship to the school but you have to play on the sports team and not get kicked off okay yeah. it's a conditional gift academic scholarship you have to hold a certain gpa yeah okay and my personal favorite 
engagement ring. Oh, yeah. It's a gift. It's a free gift, Gary. Yeah, yeah. But it's conditional. Right. Conditional on what? Your, um, your, uh, yeah. The trust, you trust that person to have your back, basically. What are the conditions to accept the wedding ring? The, yeah. the engagement ring. What are they? Yeah, you make a vow or covenant. You got to marry them. Right. That's true. So you got to go to the wedding, right? And yeah. you can't just take the ring. Yeah. And not the ring giver. Right. That's not how that works. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, so that's what the gospel is like. Right. If I go to Stockton, now unconditional gifts do exist, right? If I go to Stockton and I give someone 100 bucks and walk away, sure, that's unconditional. Right, yeah, you just... And the Christians are trying to make the gospel like that. They said, oh, no, God's just given us the... And the, they say, yeah, if you believe, then you that's how you accept. It's kind of like you just have to accept it, right? So it's like right. the homeless guy, all he has to do is reach out his hand and take the, and take the 100. That's your... That's That's... And, and and then, you know, Calvinism is trying to take that away, too. Right. No, it's not your hand. It's, you know, there's no free will, right? Yeah, but the Christians... Is, that's where they get it really wrong. Okay? That's pretty insane. Yeah. But but the free gracers, right, they'll say, oh, yeah, you just got to reach your hand up and take it. Well, the Lordship Salvation people are like, no, you got to, you know, get married to God. Right. You know, you actually have to... It's, it's, a, it's an engagement ring. It's not a $100... It's not a Stockton hundred dollar unconditional gift. It's a conditional gift, conditioned on you having Christ as Lord. Well, the thing is, so it's Savior yeah, and Lord. Yeah, because people don't understand the covenant of baptism. And and really quick, Matthew yeah. eighteen. Yeah. Again, the forgiveness. The, the the thing is, is like, he's like, I just gave you an engagement ring. Yeah. You know, you need to change as a person. Yeah. Repent of sins. Turn to Christ. You know, be a friend of God. Yeah. Love God. Right. Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing. That's all we have. So, that's the big signature deal. If we love Him, we will keep His commandments. His commandments. And so many people get that wrong. It's crystal clear. But because they don't understand the administration else, how what governs that. What, they're, what that actually is, you know, because the people doing it don't have the authority to do it. It's a death and a burial. Yeah, yeah. and everybody kind of gets that idea, but the thing is, what they don't get is the person that has a priest that is going to minister to something else, you know? And so, without that, it's nothing. It's, I suppose the contract is void because it was done you know? so it's like you make a contract with somebody but there's weasel words in there that aren't valid you know it's like the guy never had the money in the first place to put up you know and, uh, and so the contract is torn in half because it's not valid and that's why he said to Joseph Smith in the first vision, he said, they have a form of God by the power of God. Because in the ordinances, determines what they are, what the limitations are to each of those offices. Anyway, 
I like what um, I think it was John Wesley, an early reformer. I might be getting it wrong. It was this guy, his, um, he was, you know, ordaining somebody to be a judge. This kind of had a bit of a falling out. His brother believed you need to have some sort of authority to do that. And so he wrote a poem by John. He said, he, you know, he put the hands upon the head to ordain a man a deacon. But the question is, who ordained him? You know, where did you get your authority to do this? Wow. You know, because he knew his brother had never had some angelic visit or anything like that and that's why if we have the uh, fourth what is it the uh, fifth article of faith we believe that a man must be called of god by prophecy and by the laying on of hands by those who are in authority to administer who are author let's see by those who are authorized to perform the ordinances. Gosh, why am I, man, I must have been in the sun too long. Cause I know the, I know what it's all hard, but it's like, yeah. It's all right. We believe that a man must be called of God by prophecy and by the laying on of hands by those who are in authority to preach the gospel and administer in the ordinances thereof. That's it. And that's it. That's a very, very key piece right there.